Does Quentin Tarantino dream of blood-soaked sheep? A female assassin's revenge story? Pfft. More like a showcase of Quentin Tarantino's bloodthirsty fantasies and angsty middle school revenge journal. After watching this crimson-colored flick, I just have one question for Mr. Tarantino. Dude, were you the kid who pulled wings off flies and set ants on fire for fun? This entire movie is like someone turned Grand Theft Auto cheats on in real life. Our heroine Uma swings her sword, and fountains of blood erupt as if these baddies are piñatas filled with red Gatorade. What profound meaning is Tarantino trying to convey here? The fragility of the human condition? A thoughtful critique of violence? LOL nope. He just has an unhealthy obsession with overly stylized carnage. But the most annoying part is these disposable henchmen, who might as well have dead meat name tags. They're walking blood bags waiting to get slashed open in Tarantino's twisted adult version of a tomato stomping contest. Forget character development. They exist only to bleed all pretty-like and satiate Tarantino's inner Dexter. Now Uma's a total beast as a ruthless assassin, but come on, man. Let her emote something besides cold-blooded killer for two hours. Give this woman some more acting calories to work with. And even if this is an homage to Kung Fu flicks, please give us some heart between all the severed limbs. Leaving the viewers numb ain't awe. By the final fight, I was begging for this torture porn to end. But nope, Tarantino leaves it open for a sequel, clearly jonesing for more of his signature bloodbath and beyond carnage. All I can say is, Quentin, for the love of God, get some therapy and stop treating movies like your own personal Grand Theft Auto sandbox. No audience deserves to sit through your sociopathic vengeance fantasies. My guy, you need Jesus.